this evening's video, we're going to be tackling a very, very popular topic in ancient Egypt. My headphone wire keeps brushing. Um, I did a conspiracy theories video on ancient Egypt. It's got to be nearly two years ago. And I think since then I've maybe done a history or a, and or a facts video on it. But, as I mentioned, as we're kind of revisiting our conspiracy theory topics in tonight's video, it's sort of going to be a little bit of a conglomeration of um, all of the, the, the previous themed videos we've done. So, this video is going to incorporate history and facts and then at the end some conspiracy theories to uh, essentially paint a more whole picture of uh, just how the pyramids were built or what people believe uh, to be how, uh, how the pyramids were constructed. So we're going to begin by giving um, a little bit of history to the pyramids, when they were built, uh, why, etc, etc. We're then going to look into uh, the uh, traditional and academically accepted uh, way in which the pyramids were supposedly built. And then we're going to conclude with uh, with the fun stuff, uh, looking, taking a little look at a few of the conspiracy theories surrounding the, the pyramids, particularly the pyramids of Giza. Um, so I hope you do enjoy this video, I hope you find it entertaining. Uh, these conspiracy theory videos often are, and uh, if you do enjoy them, be sure to leave a like. But without further ado, let's get into the pyramids. Built during a time when Egypt was one of the richest and most powerful civilizations in the world, the pyramids, especially the Great Pyramids of Giza, are some of the most magnificent man-made structures in history. Their massive scale reflects the unique role that the pharaoh or king played in ancient Egyptian society. Though pyramids were built from the beginning of the Old Kingdom to the close of the Ptolemaic period in the 4th century AD, the peak of pyramid building began with the late 3rd dynasty and continued until roughly the 6th. BC. More than 4,000 years later, the Egyptian pyramids still retain much of their majesty, providing a glimpse into the country's rich and glorious past. So, during the third and fourth dynasties of the Old Kingdom, Egypt enjoyed tremendous economic prosperity and stability. Kings held a unique position in Egyptian society. Somewhere in between human and divine, they were believed to have been chosen by the gods themselves to serve as their mediators on earth. Because of this, it was in everyone's interest to keep the king's majesty intact, even after his death, when he was believed to come Osiris, god of the dead. The new pharaoh in turn became Horus, the falcon god who served as protector of the sun god. Ancient Egyptians believed that when the king died, part of his spirit known as Ka remained with his body. To properly care for his spirit, the corpse was mummified, and everything the king would need in the afterlife was buried with him, including gold vessels, food, furniture, and other offerings. The pyramids became the focus of a cult of the dead king that was supposed to continue well after his death. Their riches would provide not only for him, but also for the relatives, officials and priests who were buried near him. So the early pyramids, from the beginning of the dynastic era, 2950 BC, Royal tombs were carved into rock and covered with flat-roofed rectangular structures known as mastabas, which were precursors to the pyramids. The oldest known pyramid in Egypt was built around 2630 BC at 
Matsukara for the Third Dynasty's King Joseon, known as the Step Pyramid. It began as a traditional mastaba but grew into something much more ambitious. As the story goes, the pyramid's architect was Imhotep, a priest and healer with some 1,400 years later. He would be deified as the patron saint of scribes and physicians. Over the course of Joss's nearly 20 year reign, the pyramid builders assembled six stepped layers of stone, as opposed to mud brick like most earlier tombs, that eventually reached a height of 204 feet. It was the tallest building of its time. The step pyramid was surrounded by a complex of courtyards, temples and shrines where Djoser could enjoy his afterlife. After Djoser, the stepped pyramid became the norm for royal burials, although none of those planned by his dynastic successors were completed, probably due to their relatively short reigns. The earliest tomb constructed as a true, smooth-sided, not stepped pyramid was the Red Pyramid at Dashur, one of three burial structures built for the first king of the fourth dynasty, Sneferu. It was named for the colour of the limestone blocks used to construct the pyramid's core. And that leads us into the Great Pyramids of Giza. So, no pyramids are more celebrated than the Great Pyramids of Giza. Located on a plateau on the west bank of the Nile River, on the outskirts of modern-day Cairo. The oldest and largest of the three pyramids at Giza, known as the Great Pyramid, is the only surviving structure out of the famed Seven Wonders of the World. It was built for Pharaoh Khufu, Sneferu's successor and the second of the eight kings of the fourth dynasty. Though Khufu reigned for 23 years, relatively little is known of his reign beyond the grandeur of his pyramid. The sides of the pyramid's base average 755.75 feet, and its original height was 481.4 feet, or 147 meters, making it the largest pyramid in the world. Three small pyramids built for Khufu's queens are lined up next to the Great Pyramid, and a tomb was found nearby containing the empty sarcophagus of his mother, Queen Hetaferes. Like other pyramids, Khufu's is surrounded by rows of mastabas, where relatives or officials of the king were buried to accompany and support him in the afterlife. The Middle Pyramid at Giza was built for Khufu's son Pharaoh Khafre. The Pyramid of Khafre is the second tallest pyramid at Giza and contains Pharaoh Khafre's tomb. A unique feature built inside Khafre's pyramid complex was the Great Sphinx, a guardian statue carved in limestone with the head of a man and the body of a lion. It was the largest statue in the ancient world measuring 240 feet long and 66 feet high. In the 18th dynasty, the Great Sphinx would come to be worshipped itself as the image of a local form of the god Horus. The southernmost pyramid at Giza was built for Khafre's son, Menkare. It is the shortest of the three pyramids at 218 feet and is a precursor of the smaller pyramids that would be constructed during the 5th and 6th dynasties. So, who built the pyramids? Though some popular versions of history held that the pyramids were built by slaves or foreigners forced into labour, skeletons excavated from the area show that the workers were probably native Egyptian agricultural labourers who worked on the pyramids during the time of year when the Nile River flooded much of the land nearby. Approximately 2.3 million blocks of stone had to be cut, transported and assembled to build Khufu's Great Pyramid. The ancient Greek 
historian Herodotus wrote that it took 20 years to build and required the labour of 100,000 men. But later archaeological evidence suggests that the workforce might have actually been around 20,000. And that draws us into the end of the Pyramid Era. Pyramids continued to be built through the 5th and 6th dynasties, but the general quality and scale of their construction declined over this period, along with the power and wealth of the kings themselves. In the later Old Kingdom pyramids, beginning with that of King Unas, pyramid builders began to inscribe written accounts of events in the king's reign on the walls of the burial chamber and the rest of the pyramid's interior. Known as pyramid texts, these are the earliest significant religious compositions known from ancient Egypt. The last of the great pyramid builders was Pepi II, the second king of the sixth dynasty, who came to power as a young boy and ruled for 94 years. By the time of his rule, Old Kingdom prosperity was dwindling, and the pharaoh had lost some of his quasi-divine status as the power of non-royal administrative officials grew. Pepi II's pyramid built at Saqqara and completed some 30 years into his reign was much shorter at 172 feet than others of the Old Kingdom. With Pepi's death, the kingdom and strong central government virtually collapsed, and Egypt entered a turbulent phase known as the First Intermediate Period. Later kings of the Twelfth Dynasty would return to pyramid building during the so-called Middle Kingdom phase, but it was never on the same scale as the Great Pyramids. The pyramids today Doom robbers and other vandals in both ancient and modern times removed most of the bodies and funeral goods from Egypt's pyramids and plundered their exteriors as well. Stripped of most of their smooth white limestone coverings, the Great Pyramids no longer reach their original heights. Khufu's, for example, measures only 451 feet high. Nevertheless, millions of people continue to visit the pyramids each year, drawn by their towering grandeur and the enduring allure of Egypt's rich and glorious past. So that kind of gives um, a good introduction, I would say, to, uh, to the significance of the pyramids and why and briefly touching on how they were built, but we're now going to look in a little more detail at the more accepted methods in which uh, the pyramids were built. One of history's most ancient and unsolved puzzles is the construction of the pyramids. How were the Egyptian pyramids built? Again and again over the course of history, Many scholars and scientists asked and wondered the same question of just how they were built. Well, the general theory is based on the belief that the huge stones were carved from the quarries using copper chisels. Then these blocks were dragged and lifted into position. However, the method regarding the movement and placement of these stones is under great dispute. Techniques that were used in the process of constructing the Egyptian pyramids have baffled and puzzled many historians and scientists for countless years. Many controversial hypotheses were introduced regarding the construction of the pyramids. The form of the workforce is also under a huge debate. It is believed that the pyramids were constructed using slave labour. But another theory suggests that the pyramids were built by tens of thousands of free skilled workers that worked for a salary. What is certain is that the workforce was highly organised and managed to the highest level by following an organised and planned process.
process that consisted of three phases. So, these phases are as follows. Phase one was choosing the perfect building site. The first step in building a pyramid was to choose a suitable site. They had to be on the west side of the Nile, where the sun would set. Considering that ancient Egyptians believed that wherever the sun sets, that was a portal to the afterlife. The pyramid also needed to be situated on the high ground, away from the danger of flooding at the time of the Nile's inundation. However, it couldn't be too far away from the Nile bank, because the river would be used to transport blocks of fine quality limestone for the outer casing from Dura on the other side of the Nile. The site chosen would be at a point on the desert plateau that would be proved a firm rock base capable of supporting the great weight of the pyramid without any risk of cracking considering that some of the greatest pyramids weigh around 2.5 tons. The pyramid blocks, I assume that means. The site chosen for the construction of each pyramid was considered also based on the distance of the pyramid to the respective king's residence, as the king would need to regularly inspect the development of his burial chamber. That brings us into phase two, preparing the site. No plans for the construction of the pyramids were ever found, but the construction of pyramids was not a haphazard affair, and the measurements used were accurate to an insanely high degree. The workers had first to prepare a firm foundation by removing the loose sand from the rock. Then, the rock base had to be made absolutely flat. The workers may have done this by building low mud walls all around the base and channels in a grid pattern over the surface. They would then fill the channels with water and mark the level the water would reach. After the water had drained away, protruding rock would have been cut back to the level indicated, and any depressions filled with stones to make a perfectly level surface. Each side of the pyramid had to face one of the cardinal points. The builders probably established true north first and worked out the other directions from that. They may have found true north by taking a sighting on a particular star in the northern sky. They would then observe the rising and setting of the star and mark its appearance and disappearance on an artificial horizon. By bisecting the angle thus made, they would obtain a north-south line. They had instruments for drawing right angles, so they would have then been able to find it east and west. Next, they had to make the base perfectly square, with all four sides exactly the same length and the corners in perfect right angles. And that brings us on to phase three, raising the blocks. Sometimes rocky outcrop was used as the core of the pyramid to save the work. The inner chambers and passages would have been constructed independently, and the actual pyramid built around them. Some of the royal pyramid builders seem to have changed their minds about their preferred location of the burial chambers. The inner pyramid would then be built out of limestone cut from the desert plateau. When the main structure was finished, the pyramid was completed by encasing it in blocks of finely cut and dressed limestone from Dura. Sometimes granite was used for the lower courses. So, what are the pyramids made of? The stone used in the building of the pyramids were not little bricks. The bricks in the pyramid vary in size, however the largest can be found in the king's chamber. These particular stones differ from the regular limestone blocks, or are instead made of granite. granite. The precise method of raising the pyramids is not known, but these were not invented until Roman times. However, the Greek historian Herodotus tells 
sorts of levers being used to raise the blocks from one level to the next. It has also been suggested that workers operating in teams used a ramp to haul the blocks into position. As the pyramid grew in size, so the ramp would have been raised to enable the workers to reach the next level. The main problem with this is that the ramp would eventually have been huge as the pyramid itself, and would have been an immense distance into the desert. No trace of such a structure has definitely been identified at any of the various pyramid sites. Another idea is that the ramp would have gone around the pyramid and was dismantled when the pyramid was completed. Construction methods are still hotly debated and are still one of the greatest mysteries of ancient human civilization. And that debate wonderfully segues us into the final part of this video. A debate that has led many to believe that the pyramids were only constructed with extraterrestrial assistance. So, let's get into some conspiracy theories about the construction of the pyramids. So, this first article is titled Time Trouble Shock. Speed of Light is Final Proof. Aliens Built Pyramids, claims researcher. So, ancient pyramids of Giza could have been built by advanced alien visitors, according to shock new claims from a researcher. Conspiracy theorists have claimed for decades that construction of the ancient wonders were far beyond the means of the early Egyptians, so they must have had outside help. Researchers believe extraterrestrials left vital clues in the design of the pyramids, which prove it could not have been our ancestors who built the extraordinary feats of engineering. And the experts claim the truth lies behind one thing, the coordinates. The speed of light is 299,792,458 meters per second, and the geographic coordinates for the Great Pyramid are 29.9792458 degrees north. However, humans could not measure the speed of light with this precision until 1950, thousands of years after the pyramids went up. Travelling at the speed of light is theorised as being the only way to time travel and believers claim the advanced aliens could have returned to Earth from the future to build the monuments. YouTube researcher Manu Sefzade said it is possible but that those who placed the Great Pyramid on the Giza Plateau had an inkling of the speed of light to a degree of accuracy not possible without highly technical equipment. One of his followers said, the speed of light in the metric system appears in the design and location of the Great Pyramid, when the decimal point is slid along the value. Aliens chose this location for a reason. This striking similarity is difficult to accept as a coincidence. There can be no doubt that it is a mathematically intelligent design associated with the stellar belief of its builders. The believers of the ancient aliens theory claim extraterrestrials also came to help build Stonehenge in Wiltshire in the UK and other ancient monuments connected with the cosmos. They have dubbed the hypothetical advanced visitors as ancient astronauts. The theory suggests they were mistaken for gods by our ancestors, who depicted images of them in ancient artwork, which are now said to show pictures of aliens and flying saucers. Let's put them on the screen. They supposedly visited Earth thousands of years ago, studied different tribes, and were mistaken for gods. One conspiracy website, outerworlds.com, dedicates a whole section to the argument that aliens built the pyramids. The theory 
says, because two imaginary diagonal lines extend from the pyramids on either side of the Nile River Delta. The early Egyptians could not have known this when building them, to be so accurate with their positioning. With their precise measurements and alignments with celestial bodies and magnetic north, it has been long argued that our ancestors around 4,600 years ago would have been able to physically build the ancient pyramids of Giza. The theory says the ones which were supposedly built to house the remains of dead pharaohs, the only ones you thought were built by the Egyptians, well, you're wrong. They were built by aliens. <laughs> Here's what really happened. A couple of aliens flying high, enough over the earth to be able to see where the Nile Delta's origin is, easily saw what orientation the pyramid would need to be in order to have its diagonals lie on those two lines. Outerworld.com also says the Great Pyramid lines up almost exactly with the magnetic north pole. It says how could the Egyptians possibly have built their pyramid facing the exact magnetic north pole without even having a compass. Those aliens, abundant in their knowledge and drowning in technology, came along and using their compasses, they landed on Earth and found the actual magnetic north and south poles. They then built the pyramids. However, it is a huge leap to go from a mystery of how they were built to saying it was aliens. On the flip side, Ancient Aliens Debunked.com <laughs> is as equally passionate about the evidence that humans could have built the pyramids when history tells us they were constructed. In an article about the pyramids, the website says the so-called unfinished obelisk is 1,000 tons and made of granite, but was abandoned midway through because a crack developed. It said this stone, because it is unfinished, gives us direct insight into how they cut and shaped granite, as well as other stones. After the stones had been roughly shaped using pounding stones, they would begin to polish them with grinders. There have been many types of stone grinders or polishers found in ancient Egypt. About 85% of the stone used in the construction of the pyramids was relatively soft sandstone, which was quarried right on site. The site says there's evidence that wooden sleds with ropes made from papyrus were used to move stones. It added, I at least hope that by now most of us can see that these construction techniques are well within the capability of mankind to conceive and achieve without the intervention of aliens. I mean, the, I personally can't verify whether the, the coordinates truly are that and they do match the speed of light because if that is true that is that really is totally totally bonkers like what are the odds of those numbers being exactly the same like um that's the one bit where i'm like damn that that surely cannot be a coincidence but maybe not so we're going to conclude this video with the article so why do so many people still think aliens built the pyramids. So, conspiracy theories make the world go round or flat. The greatest hits include the yellow minority, lizard people and Afro Levine being a clone. But none have enjoyed quite like the theory that ancient aliens built the pyramids. The tinfoil belief has been kicking around since medieval times and now, thanks to TV series like Ancient Aliens, Currently in its 16th season, it's more popular than ever. In July 2020, tech edgelord Elon Musk tweeted, Aliens built the pyramids, ops. And conspiracy theorist bed friend Joe Rogan has hosted a podcast with an autodidact who believes ancient civilizations ruled the earth. 
believers are just your classic conspiracy theorists. LSD heads or Louis Theroux long-form nutjobs either. Mainstream international publications, including the BBC and National Geographic, have reported on the matter. And it's also popped up on TikTok, which suggests people debate the theory across all walks of Western life. What they all believe, in one form or another, is that the pyramids in ancient Egypt were built by outer space terrestrials, who likely used them as a way to monitor and observe the planet Earth. But where, of every absurd belief in the world, did the idea that aliens built the pyramids come from? To find out, we spoke to Karen Douglas, a professor of social psychology at the University of Kent, who explained that much like simulation theory, which Elon Musk also loves, the most popular conspiracy theories are those which can't be proven wrong, or theories that mainly just ask questions about what happened. When the mystery is as big as the Great Pyramid of Giza, the world's tallest building for about 3,800 years, and the only original wonder of the world still standing, it's easy to see how conspiracy theories can stick like a bad case of super skunk induced paranoia. These points don't really explain the astronomical leap from those who lived there did it to aliens did though. I decided to post a poll on Instagram and Twitter following to see how many of the people I regularly enjoy beers with also harbour a belief that aliens knocked up the Egyptian pyramids, and if so, why? Twitter came in at 24%, Instagram 42 Almost everyone who said yes said their primary reason for believing the conspiracy is the sheer scale of the pyramids and the lack of technology to build them at the time. Plus some stuff about space. Essentially, there's a correlation between the location of the three largest pyramids in Giza and the Orion's Belt constellation. For Rian, 21 from Cardiff, he said, It just feels impossible that any humans could have done it back then. They're so intricately built, and there's a lot of mathematical clues supposedly built into them. Nikki Nielsen is an Egyptologist at the University of Manchester who knows that the Egyptians built the pyramids themselves as proven by quarries, diaries, tool marks and other forms of evidence. For the benefit, benefit of the theorists, I asked how humans could have lifted the giant stones used to build the pyramids, some weighing 80 tons or some around 40 small elephants, into the sky. Belize, he says very calmly, they could pull very heavy blocks up a very steep gradient using bullies and a ramp. The actual ramp that's preserved is very steep. I think it's something like 16 degrees. Despite there being academic reasoning for how Egyptians built the pyramids, aka the bullies, people still believe aliens built or at least instructed the building go on to make YouTube videos about the conspiracy, which then perpetuates the belief for a whole new generation of sceptics and extraterrestrial enthusiasts. We'll never know the full story, so people fill in the gaps with the narrative they believe the most, which for lots of people goes back to aliens. Dim25 from Northampton, shout out says, a theory I've thought of is that the pyramids might have been used like hands on a clock, so that aliens could me measure the passage of time when observing Earth from the outside. This, he says, is why they are placed in such a specific position. Berean, the ambition of the task of constructing 400 foot high pyramids, coupled with how there must be other forms of life out there, suggests there's a fair chance extraterrestrials could have been involved. The pyramids are way beyond anything else of the time that we know about. But is it really true that we don't know of any other elaborate structures from 
a similar ancient period. Greek and Roman architecture are historically seen as ahead of their time, both beautiful and intricate, but no one suggests extraterrestrials came down and helped build the Colosseum, Nielsen says. I don't think that the people who believe that aliens built the pyramids are all racist, but the conspiracy perpetuates a very Eurocentric view of other cultures, not just the Egyptians, but Mayans and Incas and whoever else. Aside from Stonehenge, European ancient monuments aren't tracked into the whole ancient aliens debate, like the Colosseum, and even though it's clearly a massive work of construction, it removes agency from indigenous cultures and it takes their ownership of their own history away from them. Arabic writing from the time pretty unanimously says it was the Egyptians, but nobody bothered to check for a long time. When I raised this with Rian, they said, I hadn't thought about that. It is problematic. All of the people I've seen mention the conspiracy are white too. It is still the most impressive of all the ancient buildings though, so perhaps it could be the one aliens did help with. I'll have to think more about it. Nielsen happily concedes that while there is evidence for many things, there'll always be questions about how exactly the pyramids were built. In 200 years, when something else becomes popular in culture, maybe that will be used as the alternative to Egyptians themselves building it. He says, adding, people will always have an alternative idea instead of accepting that non-Europeans are capable of building monumental architecture, which is, after all, the easiest explanation. The pyramids were built by the Egyptians because they were there. Yeah, I think, um, the kind of, uh, maybe racist is the wrong word, although there probably will among a lot of, uh, of the earlier conspiracy theorists, um, among them definitely would have been the, the sort of racist sentiment, but I think it's, uh, a lot of the time it's, it's just a, it's simply a lack of, a lack of knowledge, and while no one can quite definitively state how they were built, people saying their lack of technology clearly don't have that great a grasp on ancient Egypt, like, we think of technology as like um, electricity and like the things we hold in our hands, laptops, etc. But technology extends way beyond that. And actually, ancient Egypt for the time were a pretty, pretty advanced civilization and had some really, um, really technologically advanced methods, particularly with uh, their construction. And I mean, me personally, I see no reason why this extend to the, the building of the pyramids. I look whether it was slave labour or hundreds of thousands of volunteer workers, it's clear that they had the numbers to shift these big blocks, so and like it wasn't just like a thing that was done overnight, like it was done over a number of years, so I do think it's plausible not to completely boo boo the uh the conspiracy theories, but I just don't totally, uh, yeah, the, the bit, like I said, that does get me a wee bit is, uh, the coordinates for the, for the speed of light, but again, I haven't been able to verify that, and I'm not sure if that has been completely verified. Um, but, like, they still had the methods for being completely precise, like one of the articles said, like, to find the northernmost point, uh, they would just track a star in the north sky, and then they had the ability to find right angles, so then it's very easy to find north, south, east, west. So that kind of explains that. Um, but look, I think um, as long as it's not too deep, I don't think there's any particular harm in, um, you know, playfully believing that aliens might have helped. It's when it, it's when it comes down to the fact that you completely discredit the Egyptians back then where it becomes a little bit of a problem and like that, like uh, Dr. Nielsen said or whatever, you're kind of neglecting their agency uh, of the time. But um, I think people just want to uh, believe in the fantastical and when there's gaps, I think it's only natural to fill it with the most fantastical thing you can think of, um, the existence of aliens, I think. Uh, falls under that for sure. But that was a uh, 
history and insight into the construction of the pyramids and how they were built, while they might not have been built. Um, so I really hope you did enjoy, like, a, like I've mentioned a couple of times now, we're revisiting, um, sorry, I'm, I'm starving, my stomach keeps rumbling, we're revisiting uh, a lot of the conspiracy conspiracy theories we've we've already done but addressing them as questions so we, we did jfk a few weeks ago and we looked at who shot jfk today we've addressed who built the pyramids and we've got loads more to come we've got uh is the earth really flat um did they really land on the moon in 1969 is the earth hollow etc etc so plenty more fun conspiracy theories to come in a more deep dive format so uh, be sure to keep your eyes peeled and to be subscribed with notifications on but that is going to do it for this evening's video hopefully you did enjoy it if you did if you did if you did and you're able to then please give it a like subscribe if you are new to the channel and until the next video everybody